All right, everyone, get ready for a deep dive today into the world of Augustin Jean Fresnel. Fresnel! You might remember that name from your physics classes. Oh, yeah, definitely. But we're going way beyond equations today. Fresnel's work, it's the foundation of so much cool tech. Absolutely. Cutting edge stuff, quantum cryptography, those super precise sensors, even VR. All have roots in what Fresnel was doing back in the 1800s. We've got an incredible essay by Yorgo Schnepat as our guide for this deep dive. Schnepat, yeah, he's great. So who is Fresnel? Well, Schnepat paints a picture of him being born right in the thick of the French Revolution, 1788. Wow, what a time to be alive. Right. A brilliant kid, loved math and physics, went to top schools, became an engineer. That engineering background, I think that's really key. Schnepat highlights that too. Yeah, that practical problem-solving approach. You can see how that shaped his work in physics. It makes total sense when you consider the scientific world back then. Newton's particle theory of light, that was the accepted truth. Everyone thought light was made of these tiny particles. Yeah, exactly. But Fresnel, he dared to question that. Well, move. And the key to unlocking a new understanding of light, the famous double slit experiment. Ah, the double slit experiment, such a classic. So picture this, you've got a beam of light, you shine it through two tiny slits. Now, if light was really just particles, what would you expect to see on the other side? Two bright lines, right, where the light passed through the slits. Makes sense, right. But that's not what happens. Nope. Instead, you get this pattern of bright and dark bounds alternating. An interference pattern. Exactly. And the only way to explain that, light has to be acting like a wave. Waves overlapping, interfering with each other. Schnepat really emphasizes how groundbreaking this was. Fresnel wasn't tweaking some existing idea. He was completely overturning centuries of thinking about something as basic as light. It's a fundamental shift in how we understand the universe, really. So Fresnel sees this interference pattern, and he's like, aha, light is a wave. But he doesn't stop there. Of course not, I gotta prove it. He needs more than just a cool experiment to convince the skeptics. Right, you need the math, the hard evidence. And this is where Fresnel's genius really shines. Mm -hmm. He develops a set of equations to describe how light behaves. The Fresnel formulas. Now, those are some important formulas. I'll admit, when I hear formulas, I kind of zone out a bit. I get it. But Schnepat makes it clear, these formulas are not just some abstract math. They describe how light reflects and refracts, why a straw looks bent in water, how lenses can focus light. Everyday phenomena explained by these equations. And they go way beyond explaining the everyday. They laid the groundwork for so much tech we use today. Oh, absolutely. Fiber optic cables. The entire internet relies on those, and they wouldn't exist without Fresnel's formulas. VR headsets, those use Fresnel lenses to be lighter and more compact. It's incredible to think how something from the 1800s is so deeply embedded in our modern world. Right. Makes you wonder what Fresnel would think if he could see how far his work has come. But wait, there's another fascinating concept Schnepat dives into. The Fresnel Zone. The Fresnel Zone, yeah, that's all about what happens to light waves after they hit an obstacle. So imagine a beam of light hitting a wall. The Fresnel Zone describes how those waves spread out and interfere with each other after encountering that wall. Crucial for understanding how things like radio waves travel and how antennas work. Okay, I need a visual here. So it's kind of like um, ripples in a pond, right? You throw a rock in, the waves spread out, but if there's a log in the way, those ripples are going to change shape after they hit the log, yeah. Exactly, that's a great analogy. Light waves experience these interference patterns in the Fresnel zone. And understanding those patterns is what allows engineers to, say, design antennas that get the best signal. So it's not just about understanding light itself. It's about using that understanding to build better technology. Absolutely. It's a perfect example of how fundamental science connects to the things we use every day. And, you know, this is just the beginning of Fresnel's impact. His work on light waves, it laid the groundwork for one of the most mind-blowing concepts in physics. Yeah. Wave-particle duality. Hold on, are you saying the guy who basically proved light was a wave helped open the door to the idea that it can also act like a particle? That's exactly what I'm saying. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem kind of counterintuitive, right? But that's what's so cool about science. For sure. Fresnel's work helped us see that light doesn't fit into those neat little boxes we try to put it in. It's got this dual nature. Sometimes it's a wave. Sometimes it's a particle. It's both. And wrapping our heads around that, that paradox, 
It opened up a whole new world of physics. It really did. So we've got this guy who challenged Newton, proved light acts like a wave, gave us those formulas that are used in everything from fiber optics to VR, and he even helped lay the groundwork for quantum mechanics. It's pretty amazing. All in the 1800s. But what do you think about stuff like quantum cryptography? Yeah. You know, using light to create these super secure communications. Schnepphat actually talks about that, how Fresnel's legacy is tied to these cutting edge fields. Quantum cryptography, it's all about using quantum mechanics to create unbreakable codes, basically. And you know one of the weirdest things about light at the quantum level? Just observing a photon, looking at it, can change its state. Whoa, really? Yeah. So if someone tries to eavesdrop on a quantum encrypted message, they'd mess it up. They leave a trace, like a self-destructing message for spies. Exactly. And it's those same principles of light interference that Fresnel described, you know, how light waves interact with each other, that are at the heart of how you build those quantum cryptography systems. So you're using the very nature of light to protect information. Pretty cool. Huh? It's amazing. And Schnepphat points out how Fresnel's legacy is shaping another really important field. Precision optics. Oh, yeah. Precision optics is all about being able to manipulate and measure light super accurately. And guess what? Those Fresnel formulas we talked about, the ones that explain reflection and refraction, they're essential for designing the instruments used in precision optics. So these are instruments that can, what, measure the distance to a star or something? Yeah, or analyze the chemical composition of a distant planet. Schnepphe even mentions how instruments used in cutting-edge quantum research, the kind pushing the boundaries of what we know about the universe at the tiniest level, rely on those formulas to work. So Fresnel's work is literally helping us unlock the secrets of the cosmos. It is. And then there's holography, you know, those 3D images that look like they're floating in midair. That always blew my mind. Yeah, those are cool. Well, Fresnel's understanding of light diffraction, how light bends around obstacles, that's what makes holography possible. So it's connected back to the double slit experiment, those interference patterns. Exactly. Holograms, they work by recording and recreating those interference patterns. It's another example of how Fresnel's work paved the way for tech that seemed impossible just a few decades ago. It's pretty mind-blowing to think about how the work of one scientist can have such a ripple effect across time, mm -hmm. across different fields. Mm -hmm. Fresnel's legacy is woven into so much of our modern world, from how we communicate securely to how we explore the universe. It makes you really appreciate the power of fundamental scientific research. It does. Snappat makes a good point about that. Fresnel's story, it reminds us that Scientific breakthroughs, they often come from really understanding the seemingly simple things around us. Like light, something we experience every single day, but it holds so many mysteries and possibilities. Absolutely. This deep dive has definitely given me a whole new appreciation for how something so fundamental can have such a huge impact. It really makes you think, like here's Fresnel working in the 1800s, no lasers, no computers. Right, totally different world. And yet his discoveries are fundamental to things like quantum technology, which is so futuristic. Schnepphat talks about that too, how mind-blowing it is that Fresnel's work, done with the tools he had back then, is still so relevant. It shows that scientific progress isn't always about having the fanciest equipment. No, it's about that curiosity. That willingness to challenge what everyone thinks they know. Exactly. Fresnel didn't just accept Newton's particle theory. He was like, hold on, is that really how it works? He questioned it, he experimented, and he ended up changing our understanding of something as fundamental as light. And Schnepphat points out that Fresnel's work went beyond optics, too. He was touching on engineering, mathematics, even philosophy. It's all connected. And that makes me wonder, are there other connections like that that we're missing today? Oh, I'm sure there are. You know, what seemingly unrelated fields might actually be intertwined in ways we haven't even imagined. That's what's so exciting about science. There's always more to discover. Fresnel's story really highlights why it's so important to keep asking those fundamental questions. Yeah, who knows what incredible discoveries are waiting for us. Well, I think it's time to wrap up our deep dive into the world of Augustine Jean Fresnel. It's been quite a journey. From challenging Newton to laying the groundwork for quantum mechanics, Fresnel's story is a testament to the power of scientific curiosity. Absolutely. And it shows how the work of one scientist can have a ripple effect across centuries, across different fields of study. Couldn't have said it better myself. And to everyone listening, we hope this deep dive has sparked your own curiosity, shown you how interconnected science and history really are. Who knows what other fascinating connections are out there waiting to be discovered. Until next time, keep exploring. This has been The Deep Dive.